This is Rudy Giuliani with Rudy's Common Sense. Today, uh, I'm sure you see I'm in a different location than my usual comfortable den where I like to do my uh, interviews and, and monologues and discussions. I'm in Washington, D.C. And I'm in Washington, D.C. because I came here uh, to stop off originally in Delaware with Bernard Carrick, my former police commissioner, uh, to drop off something that we were required to give to the Delaware State Police. It's delicate, and I want to be very careful in how I describe it, and I'm going to describe it so that I satisfy your right to know, because we've been asked a lot of questions about it, but at the same time, I don't, uh, I'm not inappropriate. The kind of material that I found on this, uh, uh, the f photograph part of this, which is about 28,000 photos. So it took a while to find it because it's, um, well, just because it takes a long time. What I found were, um, and Mr. Carrick, what, what we found were a number of photographs that troubled us greatly. And they troubled us greatly because they were photographs of underage girls. And the underage girls were dressed in a, in a very in a pr provocative way, very little bikinis and poses that were sexually provocative. Uh, and that was troubling in and of itself. But then there was one that was straight out and out child pornography. Just straight, I mean, I guess Potter Stewart once described a, a pornography as, you can't define it, but you know it when you see it. Well, you know this when you see it. We also knew what our obligations were because Bernie had been a policeman and I had been an assistant U.S. attorney, associate attorney general mayor. As a public official, had I seen that, I'd have to report it. I'd be a mandatory reporter, as, as are medical people. When you see child pornography, or you see evidence that we also saw in the text messages and emails of an unsafe environment for the children. A considerably unsafe environment for the children, which, I, again, I will not go into detail as to why. That's with the Delaware police. Now, you would say, well, this was already with the FBI. But I have had no indication, no evidence that the FBI has ever done anything with this or anything with the very serious and obvious, overwhelming evidence of numerous crimes having been committed by Joe Biden, which they seem to be ignoring, which no prosecutor in the world could possibly ignore. So I was afraid they ignored the young girl or young girls. And let me read to you so you understand the context of it. I'm not going to read to you all of this terribly disturbing text, which makes the unsafe environment situation rather clear. But here's one uh, that maybe describes everything briefly. This is a um, text message from Hunter Biden to his father, who he describes here as Junior, which is one of his descriptions of his father. And it, it raises the question also, not only, um, not only do we have Joe Biden not properly taking care of his son, who's a drug addict, by involving him in, in illegal, high-level, high-stakes, very tense uh, uh, businesses so that Joe could make money. But what did he do about, um, what did he do about this? allegation of, at minimum, an unsafe environment for the kids, and at maximum, um, some form of sec se sexual display. We'll have to find out, but let me read this to you. It says, she, she, she meaning Hallie, who was his sister-in-law, with whom he uh, became a, lo a lover, lived in her home for, for a bit. Um, and at this point, there may have been a separation between them. I'm not sure. But in any event, this is what he writes. She, she, meaning Haley, told my therapist that I was sexually inappropriate with, mentions the young woman who, at the ages in which he'd been involved, she was in the 15, 14, 15, 16 vicinity, maybe 14, actually. Let me read it again from the beginning. She, she told my therapist that I was sexually inappropriate with when she says that I FaceTime naked with her, meaning the underage girl, 
And the reason I can't have her, the underage girl, out to see me is because I'll walk around naked, smoking crack, talking Tom girls on FaceTime. When she was pressed, she said that the girl never said anything like that. But the bottom line is that I create and caused a very unsafe environment for the kids. Well, number one, he admits that he created a very unsafe environment for the kids. Has anything been done about that? Number two, there's this back and forth about whether he was naked in front of her or FaceTimed her naked. I don't know if he did or he didn't, but I do know when you look at these photos, he spends a great deal of time walking around naked. He spends a great deal of time FaceTiming women naked. He's got what I regard as an incredibly, uh, incredibly um, disturbing number of um, pictures like that, so that something like this seems, uh, in context, uh, quite possible. In any event, even if the um, displaying himself to this young girl isn't true, he does say he created a very unsafe environment for the kids. So there are other ways in which he could do that. His almost habitual crack smoking, which is evidenced by the photographs, certainly creates a very unsafe environment for the kids. And when you consider that the mother, sister-in-law, had the same problem, uh, and that's displayed all over here, no reason for me to read that to you, um, to the extent that a child is involved, it has to be reported to the police, and it has to be dealt, dealt with as a public matter. There's a lot here that should be dealt with privately. And um, it has a bearing on uh, what a uh, national security risk Hunter Biden was and is. And uh, you, you say if this were known to our intelligence authorities, uh, he never would have been in the presence of the president. He never had been flying on Air Force One. He never should have been flying on Air Force Two. And he certainly shouldn't be doing it now because this problem hasn't been resolved as far as I can tell. And then you wonder, did the intelligence authorities under Obama have this? If they did, what do they do about it? Since he seemed to have free access. If they didn't, well, what kind of intelligence authorities existed under Brennan and Clapper and all these, all these people who were framing Donald Trump so we know what they're like and who they are? But they may have also been terrible at their jobs. So these are very, very important questions. They do get very close to very personal matters. I have no desire to make the problem worse for who knows? You know, these kids, we want to make it easier. And I hope the Delaware police handle this professionally. Um, I have no reason to believe they won't. Maybe the FBI did something about this, but there's no evidence that they did. And there's certainly no evidence that they investigated the criminal allegations, which are almost served to you on a silver platter. And that's what we're going to now discuss. Um, in as much detail as, uh, as is necessary. We'll try to summarize it, try to make it easier. But um, what we will now describe to you would arguably be one of the uh, worst scandals in the history of this country. So let's get to the main uh, part of this. Uh, there's been a, uh, an unprecedented, um, an unprecedented uh, attempt to censor the information in this case, at least unprecedented in the United States. I've never seen this. Uh, this is something reminiscent of what would have gone on in the Soviet Union. Uh, and although the Iron Curtain was something different, it, th th this is really like an Iron Curtain that's been set up in order to keep from the American people uh, very, very important, relevant facts, which uh, you need to assess and you need to know. And you need to know it before you vote. And the reason they put up the Iron Curtain is because it is so damaging. This wouldn't be done if this were just Russian disinformation or if this was unverifiable information. This is done because it's devastating. 
And because basically when you view it all, uh, you ra it raised the question, uh, should Joe Biden resign from the ticket? Because uh, he's involved in what I have to say allegedly is um, about as big a scandal as America's ever had. Certainly the biggest scandal uh, in the vice president's office. It makes the Spiro Agnew scandal look like sort of local small time uh, uh, corruption, the kind of corruption Joe was involved in when he was back in Delaware. And he started out with his brother James, you know, uh, James is a crooked lobbyist and Joe doing what James wanted. And then they would pretend that Joe didn't know and then Joe would get a, a piece of the action. Uh, so uh, I'm going to try to go through this with you and give you an overview of it because I know it's so complicated. Uh, I shouldn't have to do that. You should know these facts. This, these were printed in, the, in, in a very, very reputable newspaper. I think the third largest circulation, if not fourth largest circulation in the United States, the New York Post, could be one of the oldest newspapers in the country, founded by, in part, Alexander Hamilton and a gentleman named Archibald Gracie, whose home I lived in for eight years, Gracie Mansion in New York. It's a venerable newspaper. Um, it's a report that under any other circumstances or article that would be, be, be printed. I mean, the New York Times and Washington Post uh, over the last four years have run with articles about Donald Trump that are unsourced, meaning no sources. Actually, I believe the tax article had no sources. In fact, the tax article was based on stolen tax returns and certainly no source on the record. I don't think they even mentioned an anonymous source. But you know how often they go with another. Remember the whistleblower article? the one that Schiff uh, lied about. They did an article before the whistleblower came, uh, put out his complaint. They never identified the whistleblower. They made all kinds of allegations that turned out to be totally false. And they had nothing. But they felt the public had a right to know it. Now, this story has three people on the record. Three people on the record. And it has... It has... Uh, it's got a hard drive with uh, 28 to 29,000 pictures and about, I don't know, I could be 100,000 text messages and, and, um, and emails. Let's clear up right away, it's Hunter Biden's. There's no doubt about it. There's nothing Russian about it. The head of uh, intelligence made that clear yesterday and I, I can tell you, I don't know any Russians. <laughs> I don't do any work with any Russians. And Mr. Durkash, the Ukrainian who's alleged, alleged to have something to do with Russia, and given the biases of our intelligence services, uh, that has to be questioned. He's not a Russian, he's a Ukrainian, and he's not, nothing to do with it. I haven't talked to him in four or five months. This I got from my lawyer, Robert Costello, who got it from the gentleman who was the repairman, who was repairing this, um, this, this um, hard drive for hard for, for Hunter Biden. It was left at his store. It was left behind and Hunter never came to pick it up. You ask why? I think when you look at some of these photos and you see the condition of Hunter Biden, you'll realize why. And let me make clear from the outset that Hunter Biden is not the villain of this piece by any means. Uh, he did wrong things and he did things that were criminal. But if, I think when you go through this whole story, you're gonna have some sympathy for him. You have none for his father. And as a father, I have total disrespect for Joe Biden because this drug addiction that his son had, which is a long-term problem, should have been dealt with in a much different manner, but for Joe Biden's greed. So hard drive, Hunter Biden's, not Russian, totally accurate, and no, neither Joe Biden, nor Hunter Biden, nor the Biden campaign has disputed a single thing that we have brought forth from this uh, hard drive, whether it's a text message, a uh, email, or a photograph. It's been validated, I'd say, eight different ways independently. So if they want to fight that, and the Bidens aren't, but the corrupt media is. And... Um, they have erected an iron curtain. They've erected an iron curtain 
made up of the usual suspects, the corrupt media, the New York Times, the Washington Post, ABC, NBC, CBS, MSNBC, CNN, a lot of local papers. Iron Curtain, so you don't get to read the New York Post story. I hope you're outraged at that, because if you're not, you don't understand the origins of America or what we're about. We, we exist as a democracy, really, and we, and we began as a democracy for, for, for one main reason and, and, and a second one. The first main reason is freedom of religion. People came here because they were being discriminated against because of their religion. And people came here because they couldn't speak their mind. They couldn't petition the government. They couldn't petition the king without substantial uh, repercussions. And that's what these uh, big tech giants have now done to us, along with their co-conspirators. And you know, there's overlapping ownership of some of these, like the Washington Post. And they are uh, Democrats. They support Biden, f fine. They pathologically despise Donald Trump, largely because he's the one man who stands up to them. Everybody else bows and cowers to them. And they have an unholy uh, relationship with communist China because they make a fortune there. And I would say, uh, based on all of that, um, they've lost any sense of decency. They've lost any sense of what America's about. And if they care for America, they certainly uh, hate Donald Trump more and care about making a profit more and power more because they among other things, selling out to communist China by keeping this, uh, keeping this uh, from, uh, from you. Now it's time to take a short break. If you want a good cigar, go to a good cigar shop. You want the best, go to Famous Smoke Shop. Let Famous Smoke deliver your favorite cigars right to your doorstep at America's lowest prices. Famous opened in 1939 as a small shop in New York City. Today, it's the largest privately held American-owned cigar business in the country. That's 80 years experience in the cigar business, and they're putting that experience to work for you, making deals on the cigars you love, from affordable, everyday smokes to high-end luxury cigars for your next special occasion. Go to famous-smoke.com slash roofing and click the activate button to apply the promo code. Pick from more than a thousand cigar brands, fresh and ready to ship from Famous Smoke's climate control, 24,000 square foot humidor. Check out with the promo code RUDY20. That's RUDY, R-U-D-Y, two, zero. And get $20 off your order. Every cigar purchase you make is backed by the Famous Freshness Guarantee. Get real cigars from a real cigar shop. Ship direct to you from Famous Smoke Shop. Go to famous-smoke.com slash Rudy. That's famous-smoke.com slash Rudy. Thank you for returning, and we'll continue with our description of this um, horrible, horrible criminal enterprise. So let me see if I can uh, kind of summarize this with the things that have come out so far, because there's so much to this uh, hard drive, it can be impossible for me to analyze it professionally before the election. And you're already voting, and you need to know this, and a, a deliberate conspiracy is there to stop you from knowing it. This, must, this should outrage you. I don't care if you're a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, a Liberal, a Conservative. You gotta vote against this. You gotta vote against, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta register your vote. No censorship in the United States. I don't care how powerful you are. I don't care how much money you have. You're not gonna stop me from getting the information I need to know as a citizen. And if you, you're gonna pay a big penalty. This is a year you vote against Democrats. You vote Republican, right across the line. I'm gonna tell you why. Because you will empower the good Democrats if you do that. You'll empower them to throw out the people who have corrupted the party. And this is a, maybe a, uh, a story for another day, but I believe this corruption of the Democratic Party all began with Bill Clinton. It was a different party before that. I was here in the 1980s. By here, I mean Washington, D.C. 
I worked in the Reagan administration. I worked a lot with Democrats. I was mayor of a city that was a Democrat. I had 45 Democrats and six Republicans in the city council. I was able to work with the Democrats. Not all, most. Some were friends. Some were good friends. Some are good friends today. It hasn't been affected by this, this Trump derangement insanity. Some friends I've lost because of the Trump derangement syndrome. Some friends have lost their jobs because of it. And some fr friends have been threatened with the loss of their jobs because of it. This isn't right. This sickness has to end. The only way it ends is you elect Trump. Even if you're a Democrat, the Democrats will go back. They'll get rid of the crooks that kind of come out of Biden and Clinton and the good people of the Democratic Party, of which 98% will be able to take it over. And it can be a good alternative to Republican conservatism and traditional Democrat liberalism in the interpretation of our Constitution and our, and our, and our laws. That's a healthy, healthy country. Right now, we are unhealthy. So let's, um, let's go over the transactions that have been described so far to show you the incredible breadth of criminality involved here. The first one is the one that probably you know the most about. That's Ukraine. And Ukraine, uh, the, 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 the hard drive is filled with uh, emails and, and um, text messages that explain uh, Ukraine. It's actually the thing that led the gentleman who was repairing it to turn it into the FBI because he heard uh, the things being said by the Bidens on television and the Democrats on television during the impeachment proceedings, and he found it to be lies. Particularly uh, Joe Biden saying, I knew nothing about the company that paid all that money to my son. Uh, I knew nothing about my son's foreign dealings. So in, in, the, in the hard drive inside it, if you look at the text messages and the emails, you find Joe Biden did know about Burisma. Uh, the one that's been put out is the one in which there are a series of text messages with a gen gentleman named Poharsky, who was the number two person at Burisma and the person who ran Burisma, in which over a period of time, Hunter Biden set up a meeting with the vice president then, and then Mr. Poharsky writes an email back thanking Hunter Biden for it, having such a good meeting with the vice president, and uh, prior to that, actually, Mr. Poharsky had asked uh, Hunter Biden to use his influence to help the company. And this was his using his influence to help the company because Hunter Biden had no influence. The influence that he had sold was his father. So that's a very big lie that, that Joe Biden had been telling for years that was exploded by that uh, email trail. It also makes clear in ways that when we have time, we can go into great deal, detail on if you want. But if you go back and look at my podcast, you're going to see a lot of the detail. But here, here's what happened in Ukraine in, in, in two minutes. Uh, Mykola Zoshevsky, who was one of the biggest crooks in Ukraine and owned a company named Burisma, which had been put together by leases that he gave to himself when he was a government minister. Uh, he was, uh, when the government changed, he was caught having stolen about $5 billion. He ran away. So he was in jeopardy of losing his business and losing his $5 billion because they were chasing it all over the world. President Obama appointed Joe Biden point man to help Ukraine out of its problems. Problem number one, they were bankrupt. Problem number two, they're being attacked by Russia. Well, every time Joe Biden was a named point man, he failed. So he failed to help on either one of those two. Didn't reduce the corruption, made it worse didn't help with Russia because they wouldn't give them arms. They wanted to fight Russia with slingshots, I guess. It was President Trump who gave them guns. But worse than that, uh, Zoshevsky, facing the uh, elimination of his business and knowing that Poroshenko, the president of Ukraine, was corrupt, but he couldn't reach him because they were enemies, decided a more powerful man uh, than Poroshenko in Ukraine was Joe Biden because he was controlling the billions of dollars that would keep Ukraine going or not. And he knew what the press and the high tech media keeps from you. He knew that Joe Biden was corrupt, that he had done this before. So he, through um, a particular person who I won't name yet because 
he may very well be a witness, through a particular person, he got to Joe and he made a deal. Here's the deal, as Joe Biden would say. Here's the deal. Come on, man. Here's the deal. The deal is that um, Joe Biden was going to use his influence to protect uh, the company if the government tried to seize it because he was close to Poroshenko and because he had a holdover. He had that money. And they were friends. And in, in exchange for that, um, Zolchevsky, who was a serial briber, <laughs> bribed everyone, hired uh, his son and his son's partner and paid the money to a firm that included the stepson of the, of the Secretary of State. So he basically was able to pay the son of the vice president, who was the point man for, for Ukraine. He was able to, uh, to pay the uh, stepson of the, vice, of, of, the, of the secretary of state. And then finally, Devin Archer was the guy who was going to you know, manipulate around, uh, since convicted as a federal felon in a separate matter. In fact, a lot of the people around the Bidens had been convicted and sent to jail or on their way to jail. And the money was going to Hunter, but Hunter really did very little work, if any. He never, I, I don't believe he ever went to Ukraine, so we could describe it pretty much as a no-show job. Or After a while, the couple of times he showed up in Monaco, he was so unfortunately drunk and high that he, that he was an embarrassment to them. Uh, so this was passed through money to Joe Biden. Joe was using his son as a bag man. Typical Democrat Tammany Hall type corruption. You know, somebody else collects the money for the principal, holds it, and then passes along some or all of it. Uh, the, this is Chinese style. Read, read Schweiker's book. He'll explain to you that the Chinese uh, do corruption this way. They don't pay the money to the principal. They pay it to the son, the daughter, the brother, the close friend. And then they do two things. And let me skip ahead. There is, a, um, there is an email that describes this scheme in the greatest of, of detail. And the email says that, and, he's, and this is, this is, this is, um, this is uh, Hunter Biden complaining to his half-sister that for 30 years, I have had to pay for all of the expenses of the family and Pop required me to give half of the money to him. There you go. Very simple. You got it all. You got a nice, tight bribery case. Not atypical of the way bribery cases work. Probably obvious from all of the circumstantial evidence surrounding it. But we don't need to rely on that. We have Hunter Biden text message complaining about how he's been misused, which he has been, actually. For 30 years, he's been collecting money. That's really the old man's money. He, from that, he takes care of lots of expenses, like, um, like his stepsister or half-sister's uh, education, uh, many things. It explains how the Bidens, who for years, the question was, how can a senator have these uh, multi-million dollar homes? Well, because of the bribe money that's indirectly coming to him. That's how. The millions in bribe money. Hunter would get it, take care of the expenses, and then ultimately have to kick back half to Joe. That's how Ukraine was handled. So that's the Ukraine. This is the time to take a short break. How bad is it? Your back, knee, or neck pain? My knee pain was awful. I probably tried the same things you're trying to manage your pain. Topical ointments, pain relievers, fish oil, but nothing worked. Then I tried Omega XL. And here's why. The underlying cause of painful achy joints and muscles is inflammation. The key is to knock down inflammation before it causes permanent damage. Backed by 35 years of research, that's exactly what Omega XL does. Nothing comes close to doing what Omega XL does. There's nothing like it. If you're suffering with painful, achy joints and muscles, stop wasting money and switch to Omega XL. Order Omega XL now and get a second bottle free. 
Visit OmegaXL.com slash Rudy. That's OmegaXL.com slash Rudy. Or call 1-800-844-4888. 800-844-4888. Thank you for returning. And we will continue with our description of these crimes at the highest levels of our government. Uh, let's go to Russia. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you that these people are serial offenders. This is not a single one act of bribery. It's gone on for, as Hunter Biden says, for 30 years. I'm just going to give you the big ones. I mean, there are a lot of little ones going back to when he was a senator. So then we have China. Uh, I'm sorry, Russia. Russia, the country that Hillary Clinton came up with the false allegation that Donald Trump was colluding with Russia, which turns out to be totally false, except the FBI hid the document for four years. Why? That's worth its own investigation, isn't it? So this one, this one is pretty straightforward, although I understand it's much more complicated than what the emails show so far. Uh, $3.5 million is wire transferred from Elena Baturina, who's the richest woman in Russia, the widow of Mayor Yuri Lushenko, who I knew because he overlapped with me when I was mayor of New York, and was considered to be, the two of them were considered to be the biggest thieves in Russia. Uh, Lushkov was such a big thief that Putin had to get rid of him. So he, was he was shaking everybody down, including Putin's friends. Uh, she helped Putin get rid of him and became very close to Putin. So let's translate that into this. $3.5 million is wire transferred from Elena Buterina, the wife of the former mayor, or widow of the former mayor, to Hunter Biden's company. Think about that. Trump is investigated for four years and $40 million on a false allegation of collusion with the Russians. And these guys got $3.5 million from a friend of Putin, and nobody's investigating it. That's, that's something really wrong with our country, isn't it? It has to be fixed, doesn't it? Biden's not going to fix it. He can make it worse. You got to vote for Trump to fix this, just, just to, to fix this, so this doesn't happen ever again. Well, they get $3.5 million. Uh, she uh, she uh, gives only one explanation of it. She said she had a financial relationship with the Bidens, with the Bidens, with an S. She had a financial relationship with the Bidens. The, uh, she sent altogether 11 wire transfers after that. So it's the $4 million plus, oh, I'm going to say another 400000 in 11 different wire transfers. And it's sent uh, directly to the company known as Rosemont Seneca Thornton, and then sent to a company called Back B A C K U S A. So Rosemont Seneca Thornton is the partnership involving Hunter Biden, son of the then Vice President, Chris Hines, stepson of the then Secretary of State, and the Thornton is the nephew of Whitey Bulger, one of the biggest and most dangerous organized criminals in the United States. What's he doing there? These are the people the Bidens hang around with because this is what they are. They're a crime family. That's what they are, right under the definition of RICO. They're involved in the business of crime. They monetize Joe Biden's office to make millions for themselves. That, that's a matter of fact, not opinion. This is one that proves it. Then the money was transferred from Rosemont Seneca Thornton to a company called Back USA, which was located in Buffalo, New York. They were a startup company. They theoretically were going to produce tablet computers. And they had a group of unidentified Chinese communist partners. So we have a Russian corrupt Russian, corrupt, most corrupt woman in Russia, friend of, friend of uh, Putin, giving him about $4 million for a business that he's in with a bunch of Chinese communists. And then the records of the US Treasury Department show numerous other activities like that, similar to this, in Ukraine, Russia, Kazakhstan, and China. That's the report from the Johnson uh, Committee 
And I've seen some, but not all of those documents. I've also seen documents suggesting that there was a much bigger, uh, um, looks to me like a money laundering operation going on here, but I haven't been able to have the time to check that out. So I can't give you the details. Just to warn you that I think over the course of the next week or two, somebody else will. And um, I'll give you the amount to key in on. It's about $800 million money laundering transaction involving the Bidens, Whitey Bulger's uh, uh, nephew, and um, certainly the Russians, possibly the Chinese. But that's, somebody else is investigating that, and that is, that is only vaguely referenced here in the, uh, in the hard drive. Or it may be referenced here in the half of the hard drive that I haven't gotten to see. The next transaction we're going to emphasize, because it's been kind of laid out already, is um, one that took place when Biden was vice president. All of these have taken place while Biden was vice president as well, which makes them, um, well, the first two clear bribes. Uh, the, the third one makes the statement, um, I, don't, I didn't know my son's dealings in foreign countries, a, a uh, palpable lie, actually uh, an insult to everybody's intelligence, even before we had the, the emails to prove it. Because he flew his son Hunter to uh, China. He went to China as a point man. Remember, every time you hear point man, two things happen. America loses to Biden's make millions. So he goes to China as a point man, like he did to Ukraine, and he's supposed to get China out of the islands they had just militarized, that they dispute with, J with Japan, and also to have them lower some tariffs that had become really oppressively high. He goes there for negotiations with the Chinese government, and Hunter is on that plane for the undisclosed uh, negotiation to get money for his totally useless, decrepit, silly private equity fund, which he owns with uh, Hein's stepson, and Bulger's nephew, Whitey Bulger's nephew. Nobody would put money in this, no one. And um, Joe fails, as usual. He's got about 100% record on that failure in foreign policy. Uh, the Chinese expand their military occupation of the islands. The Chinese raise the tariffs just to <laughs> stick it to Joe and show what disrespect they have for Obama. Remember, they required Obama to come out of the back of the plane, which that guy did came out of the back of the plane, like the American president, just trying to show him who's the boss. Um, so Joe comes home empty-handed. But Hunter, wow, Hunter comes back, and within eight to 10 days, he gets a letter from the Chinese bank, the Bank of China, owned by the Chinese government, by the way. They're going to be partners in his completely useless, silly private equity fund. They're going to be partners, the Bank of China, with him. And they make a commitment, opening commitment of a billion dollars. I mean, Goldman Sachs doesn't get that. So this, this private equity fund with a, uh, with a guy who's been a failure in business, Hunter Biden, with a guy who's been kicked out of the military for being a drug addict, a guy who tragically and unfortunately has a history of being a persistent drug addict, in and out of therapy. Part of the photographs are 50 to 60 pictures of him smoking crack. Um, he's not just an addict, he's, he's a very serious addict whose father made this addiction much, much worse, which we'll explain in a minute. Uh, I feel sorry for him as an addict. I'm not sure his father does. I don't think a, a father who felt sorry for his son or understood his son would have involved a son in this kind of business who had this kind of problem. It has to be that from the time he found out about it, about it if that was the time he found out about it, when he got thrown out of the military, he should have simplified this guy's life, not have him go work with Mykola Zloshevsky, Elena Buterina, uh, eventually, uh, uh, you know, Chinese communists, put him in business as a partner with, with the Bank of China, put him in business, and one in which Joe was a partner too, with three Chinese communists, one of whom has been killed, and one of whom has gone to jail. Now, if this were your son, I don't know, do you have children? And if they ended up with a drug problem, would you put them as an intermediary between you and a bunch of world-class criminals? And if you did, wouldn't you create the kind of pressure on them that's gonna make their drug addiction worse and worse and worse? 
Now, I only mention that because Joe Biden wears on his sleeve what a great Catholic he is. Um, he's worried about these people who wear things on their sleeve too much. But he also talks about what a great father he is. He's a terrible father. He's a role model for what not to do if you have a child with drug addiction. It's very, very sad what he did to, very, very sad what he did to his son. And of all the crimes that he committed, which you know, have to be taken care of uh, by the government if we have an honest government, this one you know, gets taken, taken care of somewhere else, the terrible father that he was to his son. So then Joe is out of office. And we uh, have another uh, massive transaction. One of many, by the way, and the others I haven't looked at yet. But this one, this one I have looked at, and I can give this one to you. This one is a partnership with three Chinese communists, all of whom are intelligence operatives. Looks to me like this is an intelligence operation. It looks to me like they were setting up a future president. So it's a partnership that involves Yi Jinming, Patrick Ho, and Gong Wen Dang on one side. Those are the three Chinese communists, Yi Jinming being the uh, very high level Chinese communist who is also an intelligence operative and is a member of Chinese organized crime and is now sitting at the bottom of the Yangtze River, by the way. That's where you'll find them. And, uh, and Ho, and Ho uh, I think you're going to find a federal prison. That's the kind of people the Bidens do business with. But at this time, they weren't in prison yet. The other partners here in this deal, and the deal involves um, the Chinese communists funding it, and they're going to pay uh, the Biden family for the pleasure of being partners $10 million a year and 50% of the profit thereafter. My understanding is that the original agreement with the director was for consulting fees based on introductions. So they're being paid this for introduction. Oh, introductions alone, a rate of 10 million per year for a three-year guarantee, total of 30 million. The chairman changed the deal after we met in Miami, says Hunter, to a much more lasting and lucrative arrangement to create a holding company, 50% owned by me and 50% owned by him. So 50% owned by the Bidens, 50% owned by the Chinese communists. What a business to get into as your father is anticipating becoming president of the United States. Also, there is a... Um, a $1 million side deal with uh, Hunter, which is in this engagement letter. I'm very familiar with it. Attorney engagement letters are quite common, except this is $1 million paid to him individually, not to his law firm. So he sidesteps his law firm. He sends a uh, text message to, the, uh, to Patrick Ho, who is the uh, number two guy in the company. And he says, don't send this to my business. Send this to me directly. So this is a little $1 million for Hunter by himself. That's Hunter's signature right there. You'll see this on the receipt for the hard drive also. Same signature. And this is a signature of uh, the Chinese Communist Company, CEFC. Very well placed, high up in the Ch Chinese Communist orbit. And Ying Ming is one of the richest men in China, but also probably one of the, really one of the most corrupt. And as I said, he has since been either imprisoned or executed. $10 million every month, $10 million every year, 50% of the profits. Now, who, who are the partners here? Who are the partners in this deal? I told you the three Chinese communists on one side, and then uh, Hunter Biden, his uncle, James Biden, and the younger brother of... of um, Joe Biden, who was, who was Joe's original bag man way back when he was in the Senate and before he taught Hunter the family business. And then uh, the third is, is the wife of James Biden. So the three of them are the partners on the other side. But then when they go to lay out the equity in this other document that you can look at that comes off the hard drive, there's a, some extra equity. They're all there. The Chinese communists are all there. But there's one at the bottom. One at the bottom says 10% to H, that's Hunter, 
for the big guy. So who, who's the big guy? Would you like to guess? Uh, almost anyone but the New York Times would guess that it was Joe Biden. But I'm not going to make you guess. Because several days later, uh, Joe, Joe uh, Hunter rather, writes to the woman who's putting the business together and is going to get their office space. And because they're, they're going to be all located together. They're going to have Rosemont Seneca, which is the one with, the, with Carrie's stepson and, and, the, uh, and the Whitey Bulger nephew. They're going to have the Biden Foundation, which is some kind of a charity that the Bidens set up. And Hudson West is the name of this company. This is the partnership between the Bidens and the Chinese Communists. They're all going to be located in the same office. So Joe uh, has keys made out for Joe Biden, Jill Biden, Jim Biden, Dong Wen Dong. They're all going to be together, one big happy family, the Bidens and the Chinese Communists. And again, you don't have to guess if Joe is the big guy getting 10% of this because there's an anonymous source who's, in my, uh, from what I know, is going to go public very, very soon, uh, who has uh, testified, I believe, to the FBI, but he certainly, I know this, that Joe Biden is the big guy. He was a partner, 10%, with the Chinese communists. Don't you think he should resign as a candidate for president of the United States if just three years ago he was a partner with a Chinese, two Chinese communists, one of whom has been executed and the other of whom is in prison? I don't know. That's what I think. And in case you want to know whether he was executed or not, because there's a dispute as to whether he's been executed or in prison, there are these uh, uh, screenshots that talk about him being, uh, being arrested, being investigated, um, CEFC chairman being probed by Chinese authorities. That's Mr. Ying Ming. Then it says that the UN was investigating the bribery that the company was involved in. This is the company that Joe Biden is a partner with. UN bribery company, CEFC, now probed in China while UN keeps up its investigation. Then the number two guy of the Chinese Communist, ex-Hong Kong Minister Patrick Ho, Joe Biden's partner, denied bail and bribe case. U.S. arrest Patrick Ho over alleged bribes. And then Mr. Ying Ming, what happens to him? This is, a, this is a memo from Devin Archer, the other partner in Rosemont Seneca, also now a convicted federal felon. <laughs> Three people in this partnership. Two are convicted by the United States of major felonies, and the other one has probably been executed by the Chinese government because he was a, I don't, we don't know why, he was involved in intelligence operations. And this, this memo, or this screenshot says, Complete cash, the Chinese have arrested and apparently fully stripped and possibly already executed my partner, and I gave away my last $5,000. This is a snippet from a screenshot in which Devin Archer is reporting to Hunter Biden that their partner, the big guy who's supplying all the money, well, that he's been executed. So what do you need? What else do you need? you got three transactions, four transactions, in which uh, I count up about $30 million of bribes, and it's probably a lot more than that, go into the Biden crime family. Hunter explains to you how it's distributed. It's distributed where they take care of the expenses out of that, and then they give half uh, to, 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 the bo to the boss or the big guy or pop or junior, which is the way he's referred to in these texts. But, but, but I, 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 ha I can't stop there. I can't stop there because the press, in a way, has made, uh, has made Hunter Biden the bad guy here. It's Hunter, Hunter, Hunter. Hunter's not the bad guy. Hunter's a drug addict. Joe Biden's the bad guy. Joe Biden should have never involved his son in this. I don't know. 
I think of this scene in The Godfather where the Godfather, near the end of his life, grabs Michael and he says, I never wanted this life for you, Michael. Should have been Senator Corleone, Governor Corleone. Michael kind of explains that it didn't work out that way. What, what kind of father involves his son in his crooked business? What kind of father uses his son? What kind of father has his son in business with some of the most um, corrupt people in the world if he's a drug addict? Is he, is he that stupid that you don't realize that that's going to make worse drug addiction? Now, I told you I stopped off in Delaware on the way down here. And I stopped off in Delaware because there was a real problem on this hard drive. When you go through the photographs, the 28,000 or so, there are some really disgusting uh, shots. I would say there's only, of those shots, a lot of them are salacious and personal and that's their problem. There are uh, two, though, that rise above their problem. One is uh, the use of crack, which is um, pervasive. Not just him, but other uh, people. Pervasive and also uh, material that affects our national security for several reasons. The Chinese have all these photographs. If they don't, they're not the Chinese, and we don't have to worry. This is, this is something from which you can extort either Hunter or Joe Biden. Remember when the Democrats were all worried that Russia might have this on Donald Trump? Well, I guess they're not going to be worried that China has this on the Bidens, because this is real. And um, the second thing is, this is very delicate, and, uh, and I feel very bad having to say this, but I, it has to be explained. And this is why I stopped off in, in, in Delaware yesterday. I will read just one thing from the text and then I will tell you nothing else about it or very little about it because it has to be investigated properly. This is a discussion between his uh, half-sister, Ashley, and Hunter Biden. It's on September 23rd, 2018. And um, this is him. I'll read it in full. She, she told my therapist, and she, he's talking about Haley, who was his sister-in-law and then his lover. So he's talking about Haley. She, she told my therapist that I was sexually inappropriate with, and she mentions a young girl's name, when she, I, I think a 15-year-old girl, when she says that I face time naked with her. And the reason I can't have her out to see me is because I'll walk around naked, smoking crack, talking Tom girls on FaceTime. When she was pressed, she said that the girl never said anything like that. But bottom line is that I create and caused a very unsafe environment for the kids. This is then filled with descriptions of that unsafe environment, which are... Um, which should have been dealt with when the FBI got this. I don't believe it was. The photographs also contain um, salacious pictures of underage girls, meaning underage girls uh, scantily clad, which is a nice way I can say it, and in one case, uh, nude at the top. I believe the girl was 15. If this was on any, anybody else's computer, a person would be arrested for child pornography. I don't know what it is. I don't know where it came from. I do know I had a, a legal, well, I didn't have a legal obligation. If I were a public official, I would have had a legal obligation under penalty of a felony of reporting it. I had a moral obligation to report it to the Delaware police. And this is tragic because I have no confidence that it's being handled properly by the FBI, no confidence at all. Because I have no, no, I have no indication that they ever investigated any of this. Almost, um, almost uh, clear admissions of, of serious crimes. This is bribery at the highest level. 
of our governments between the vice president of the United States and the president of the Ukraine. This is a vice president negotiating for our country with China, maybe our biggest adversary, only he believes they're not. And his son is getting a billion and a half guarantee for a useless private equity firm? And that's not disclosed by the Obama administration? How much more was done like this that wasn't disclosed? This isn't their government. This government belongs to us. I, I know big tech and the newspapers and the television don't think it does. That's why I have the Iron Curtain up. Uh, but I'm going around that Iron Curtain. These are the facts, and this is available to you. And we're going to have more available to you, but I don't, need, I don't know why you would need much more. This is a man who sold out his country, sold out his son. He shouldn't, he shouldn't be, a, he shouldn't be a, a thousand miles from the White House, within a thousand miles of the White House. He should be in another house. That's where he belongs. That's where he would be if he was anybody else but a privileged, protected member of the club. Club turns out to be a corrupt club. It's got to be broken up. We've got to have a Teddy Roosevelt go in there and break it up like he broke up the big monopolies of 1900 and 1901 and two and three. And you know who can do that. Joe Biden's not going to do it. He's part of it. He can make it worse. Be nobody better at it. I mean, nobody that could be a modern day Teddy Roosevelt than the president we have right now because he, he, he cares only about you and the United States. He doesn't give a damn about any of these important people because they're not important when they're crooks. I don't care if they have billions. My father used to say they, you know, they put their pants on the same way. And a good man can be a very poor man and a really bad man can be a very rich man. And we got some really bad rich men and we got a lot of really good poor men. And this country should be working for all the people, not just the ones who can put up an iron curtain. This, this election is about a lot of things, but one of it is to send a message. You can't do this to us. This is America. This is our government. This is not a government in which a presidential candidate can say, you don't deserve to know my opinion about something. This is not a government in which the people who support him can put up an iron curtain so that you don't get information that you would have gotten on the other candidate within a second. We got to straighten this out. You got the ballot box to do it. You send a message to the Democratic Party. You vote Republican for president, House, Senate. Throw them out. Throw out Pelosi. Throw out Biden. Throw out the people that come from the Clinton era. And let the Democratic Party start again. And uh, then we'll have a two-party system with two parties debating each other, disputing each other, but not hating each other. And not hating America. Because one of these two parties at the top hates our country. And it's the Democrat Party. So I thank you very much for listening to me. I know this is, this is uh, complicated stuff. But being a citizen of a democracy... Uh, requires hard work sometimes, particularly when you're being obstructed and they're trying to prevent you from getting the information you need. I need you to use your common sense now, to use that very special common sense that the American people have and send them a message so hard, so tough, so, so powerful that this will never happen again. Thank you. And we'll be back in a few days.